I also have come to know there's no such thing as coincidence. There's a plan for everything. There is no such thing as coincidence. There is a plan. There is a plan for everything in our life. And as difficult as it is to accept at times, it's still part of the plan. Right after this tragedy, not right after, it was a few months later, one of the survivors in one of the classrooms, his house burned down. And he was a child that was having difficult times, too. And his little dog died in the fire. And it, it was very, very close to my home where the, the fire was, and I can remember. Shortly after this event took place, the seventh grader committed suicide. And in his note, he said, I can't live in a world that has this much evil. Now, this is coming from law enforcement sources. When he first walks into school, he's stopped. But he, they allow him in because they think he's clergy, clergy, that he actually, they thought he was a minister. But anyway, he was dressed in black with the body armor. He came in with a Glock semi-automatic pistol and a six-hour semi-automatic pistol, a clergy, that he actually, they thought he was a minister. But anyway, they, they thought, thought he was, he was a minister. minister, that he was definitely dressed in black. But one of the sources is saying, only one, that he was dressed, dressed as, as a, a member of, of the, the clergy. clergy. People may be involved in this incident. Also, we're getting reports of one of them may be wearing a non-outfit heading towards Danbury, Stony Hill. Purple van, unknown police. That uh, at times you think, like, this never really happened. This couldn't have happened. It's just unreal. It's surreal. You know, it just doesn't seem real. Like, for some reason, butterflies loved her index finger. And she would go out in the backyard and that butterfly would land on it and stay with her for hours. You know, we have the author of The Hunger Games that lives in our parish. I, I said to her after watching this movie, I, why do we do it? Why do we keep it in front of them? Mental health is so critical. We've been the victim of hoaxes, one of which called and asked me if I would dig up one of the child's body, take a photograph and send it to him to prove that that child really did die. Mental health is so neglected in this country. Mental health is so critical. It's important to be a team, and I believe that's what our staff truly is. We work together, we share our core values, and I think that's why in some ways it went as easily, if it could ever be easy for us as it did. It was amazing what happened and how it all worked out. It was all done on computer, actually, figuring out how we could get everybody in and everybody out on time. People just pulled together for us. It was incredible. Monsignor Robert Weiss of St. Rose of Lima presided over eight of the funerals. We justified that we could wear the pink vestments. Pretty much we did that all week. Pink and purple, the two favorite colors. Except for the one little boy who loved fire engines, but we decided red would be a little extreme. But we did everything we could to make those families celebrate the life of their child. And it was, <laughs> it was brutal. Um, you know, watching basketball. You know, these were uh, not anonymous children, uh, the funerals that we had at our church. So they weren't anonymous people or anonymous families. This was not an anonymous situation. And uh, that became very much the mantra of the, of the following days, that evil had visited the land. And I think because it was the Advent season, and it was the season of light, uh, we were getting ready to really uh, bring about light in the darkness. And very quickly, uh, you know, kind of the mantra of our community became, you know, darkness and evil visited us, but light has overcome it. Overcomes darkness. Our town's mantra again became, light is much stronger than darkness. Choose the light. Please show your light in this darkness. this darkness. He has been I want such to show a light them during this darkness. There's time. light away from she the said, darkness. I know that God's light that I'll help them shines find the in light. my heart. Because it gives me what darkness. I need to make it through the darkest of days. I thought maybe we should unplug our Christmas lights now. Instead of darkness. If anything, we needed light in this darkness. A grade four teacher came to the school from, from the school to the church. She was quickly followed by Monsignor. Phone calls were received that a lockdown was needed because there was a shooter in the streets of Sandy Hook. I remember looking at the faces of the grade eight students as Monsignor Weiss went to the lectern and interrupted Mass. And all of a sudden a call came in that the schools were on lockdown, that there had been a random shooting in our town. Although it didn't get a lot of media attention, tell us about that. I know you were here uh, the morning of December 14th. 
We were here in church. Uh, Monsignor got the call. Why were you here in church? You were, it was daily mass for the, Friday the students? Mass. It was Friday mass for the students. School okay. mass. And he, com he came running in. He wasn't serving the mass. And uh, we had found out that there was a shooting. And he, he said it was serious. We're on lockdown. Stay in the church. Uh, I just didn't feel that I was going to do any good being in the church. I wanted to be outside. And I went outside and everybody was on lockdown, the school, the church. We ran back, him and I had run back up to preschool. We had to make sure that they were okay. He came back into the church and uh, I stayed up there because I could kind of see at the top of the campus. And then I kept getting phone calls from friends of mine saying that there were shooters in the school behind us and they were just getting misinformation. And the rumors were really, really flying. No one knew exactly what was happening except that something was happening. Our students were at their weekly Friday morning Mass. And so I ran immediately over to church when communion had just finished to interrupt the Mass and to try to figure out what to do. Do we keep the children in church? Do we bring them back to school and put them on lockdown? Or do we just pray? And then another call came from the property manager of the school who called me on my cell phone and said, you better get down here as soon as you can. And so I got both of my parochial vicars and we went. I ran immediately down the driveway to Sandy Hook School in the company of a state police officer. And I arrived at the front door of that school and I saw the glass shattered. And the officer said, Father, would you want to go in and bless the children? For some reason, I was held back from that. But I still can remember the sound of that broken glass under my feet. I hear that every night in my sleep. Here was a door of a place where there was so much laughter, so much goodness, so much happiness, now shattered. We're not nearly as shattered as the hearts of our community, and especially broken as those families. It was like a war zone in a matter of moments. SWAT teams, state police, local police, firefighters, EMTs. I stood at the front door of that school and I just prayed, God lift us up. God made the decision to instruct the teachers to have the students go to the school building and go into the immediate lockdown. My heart was beating and my prayers were fervent that as that decision was being made, a second shooter was not in our midst. Monsignor told me that he was headed to the site and would call me. To summarize what occurred from that point, students were in lockdown until noon when we received word that the police had been chasing a van with suspects and that we can go into a soft lockdown, meaning students should remain in the classrooms, but movement within the building was permitted. I will never forget the one call when he said, Mary, the police said that they have never seen such carnage. The gurneys are leaving because there is no one to take on them. They were all out of town and heard evolving events on the news, but the name of the school was not mentioned. I remember sending a text to my husband saying all was okay can't talk. Adam was a student at St. Rose for a short period of time. A threat within the church was revealed to a deacon. A man told another woman in the church that St. Rose School was next. We went into immediate lockdown once the parish secretary called us. Police arrived and protected the exterior of the school. Under police direction and protection at all the doors, <clears throat> which was totally unbelievable, <laughs> um, around 2 p.m., we began to allow students to begin packing to go home. Within less than 30 minutes of that conversation, a phone call was received stating that our kindergarten classroom was being threatened. Police stormed the building with firearms, students were screaming, and we were once again in full lockdown. Students were able to leave the school with police escort to the school buses after 4 p.m. and to the parents' cars. I will never forget the one call when he said, Mary, the police said that they have never seen such carnage. The gurneys are leaving because there is no one to take on them. Our children are in there. I had to stand there and watch the SWAT team run through our church, watch dogs go through every building we had on the property day after day after day. You went into the school 
identify some of the victims. You were the first responder, if you will. As you look back on that experience, many people I'm sure have asked you about the power of evil. I arrived at the front door of that school and I saw the glass shattered. And the officer said, Father, would you want to go in and bless the children? For some reason, I was held back from that. But I still can remember the sound of that broken glass under my feet. I hear that every night in my sleep. You went into the school to identify some of the victims. You were the first responder, if you will. And so I got both of my parochial vicars and we went. I ran immediately down the driveway to Sandy Hook School in the company of a state police officer. Clergy, that he actually, they thought he was a minister. But anyway, they thought he was a minister, that he was definitely dressed in black. But one of the sources is saying, only one, that he was dressed as a member of the clergy. And so I got both of my parochial vicars and we went. In the church, uh, I just didn't feel that I was going to do any good being in the church. I wanted to be outside. and. I went outside and everybody was on lockdown, the school, the church. We ran back, him and I had to run back up to preschool. We had to make sure that they were okay. He came back into the church and uh, I stayed up there because I could kind of see at the top of the campus. And then I kept getting phone calls from friends of mine saying that there were shooters in the school behind us and they were just getting misinformation. Within less than 30 minutes of that conversation, a phone call was received stating that our kindergarten classroom was being threatened. Police stormed the building with firearms, students were screaming, and we were once again in full lockdown. As lunches, as lunches were being delivered, a threat within the church was revealed to a deacon. A man told another woman in the church that St. Rose School was next. We went into immediate lockdown once the parish secretary called us. Police arrived and protected the exterior of the school. Under police direction and protection at all the doors, <clears throat> which was totally unbelievable, um, around 2 p.m., we began to allow students to begin packing to go home. During that time, the superintendent agreed to allow us to close the school for the following week. The decision was based on the fact that there was already media everywhere on our campus and in town and that there would be more than one funeral a day held at our church. Within less than 30 minutes of that conversation, a phone call was received stating that our kindergarten classroom was being threatened. Police stormed the building with firearms, students were screaming, and we were once again in full lockdown. Students were able to leave the school with police escort to the school buses after 4 p.m. and to the parents' cars. Once they left, I walked around to teacher classrooms and encouraged all to leave. I also have come to know there's no such thing as coincidence. There's a plan for everything. There is no such thing as coincidence. There is a plan. There is a plan for everything in our life. And as difficult as it is to accept at times, it's still part of the plan. The clergy, that he actually, they thought he was a minister. Uh, I just didn't feel that I was going to do any good being in the church. I wanted to be outside. Adam was a student at St. Rose for a short period of time. Now, this is coming from law enforcement sources. When he first walks into school, he stopped but he, they allow him in because they think he's clergy. When he first walks into the school, he's stopped, but he, they allow him in because they think he's clergy. And the rumors were really, really flying. No one knew exactly what was happening except that something was happening.